we go into part four of chapter five uh, using the table layouts the reason why I came in here and opened up the component table at the end of part three <clears throat> was to be able to uh, show you some of the other techniques that we've got you'll notice you've got a lot of equals as we go through this list you can see that we've got quite a bit of information in here and you know my first thought is how can I analyze this data so that only what appears in the selected set is the information that I want to be able to look at. Well, we've got some tools that you can look, use. And the first thing I want to do is I want to look at uh, analyzing by my major components. So <clears throat> to do that, one of the things that we can do is we can group by this column. So I'm going to group by this column, and now you'll notice that what ends up happening is I collapse everything down into two columns. Uh, pardon me, two rec, two rows. So I can look at all the major components that are unchecked, and I can also look at all the major components that are checked. Well, now if I can do this once, what if a possibility of coming in and saying, now I want to group by this column also. Well, look what happens. I now have all my major components listed as either a miscellaneous area, a series, a, a tax junct, or a tax on a both family. Well, which ones are tax junks? Because that's kind of an oddity these days. We want to try to get things cleaned up. And look at there, I've got a Longford that's a tax junk. Hmm, why is it a tax junk? That'll be the things that I'll be looking into as part of my analysis. So I hope this gives you a, a, an interesting take on how the group by, you can use it to be able to start analyzing some of your data. And then you can also come through here and you can do a sort of sending on any of your tables because what you're doing now is you're grouping your data and you can be able to analyze your data. So I hope that gives you an indication on how some of these tools are available for you to be able to analyze data without having to run reports and put it into Excel or Access. And so then your next thought is, you know, what all have I done here? How, how do I know what I've grouped and what I haven't grouped? Well, we can come in here and we can show the box. And you'll notice that the first group that we did was tax on, I mean, pardon me, major component. And the second one was tax on kind. And so then I can come over here and I can go to on my component name and I can do a group by this column. And now I've got major component, tax on kind, and uh, component name. Now look what happens when I open up the series. Now I can look at all of my series that are grouped by that particular name. And I think uh, if I had to guess, I could say Lancaster's got multiple. And here are my two Lancasters. And now I can go through here and I can scroll across. Keep in mind, I'm still using the same table layout that freezes columns and has a set of information that I want to be able to analyze for. And so now I can see that this particular Lancaster is a 6E, this particular Lancaster is a 4E with a 4E as far as irrigated. Questionable, why? Okay, that would be something I would be quickly to uh, be able to quickly analyze and, and check for to be able to see what are some of the anomalies in the way that we've populated the data. And keep in mind, this works for any table. I'm only using the component table, but you can do this if you had all your pedons and you wanted to analyze for pedons and look at the way a particular pedon name has been horizoned, uh, you can do a lot of things with this group by. And it basically allows you to analyze your data on the screen as you would in Excel or Access without having to move it out of NASA's. That's the premise behind the use of this group by. And then, of course, if you wanted to remove everything, you can ungroup and you can click and you can ungroup and what I'm doing is a right click on each one of those and un ungroup and now I'm back to the way I was with the component name as the sort so I hope that gives you a good idea on how the group by actually works now then that was grouping by let's take this uh, in a different different method and, and let's analyze the filtering capacity. So now I'm going to scroll back over so you can see all my columns that I'm working on. And this time, I'm going to start on tax on kind. And there is a funnel. And I've showed this to you in the table layouts. Now let's take a look at this and analyze how it's used. 
I'm going to click on this. I'm going to say give me only the series. I've now filtered filtered my selected set so that all only the series are identified here. I can then come over here and I can filter on all of my um, Oh, which one would be multiple? Let's say Crete's. I can now click on my Crete and now I have all of my series that are Crete's. Now how do I know what's going on here? If you look down here in the lower left hand corner you'll see that the filter is being built as you build it. It's being populated down here in the lower left. And so it's, you know, tax on kind series. Um, you can also turn it on and turn it off this way down here. You can also clear it. I can come over here and click on the X and I have cleared that filter. Now, the thing you have to realize about a uh, filter is that it, even though it filters your set of your selected set, your selected set whenever you run a report is still reported out. Whenever you run a calculation on a filtered it still runs it on the entire selected set. All the filter is used for is analysis, to be able to analyze the data and see what needs to be, um, basically how you've populated. It's an analysis tool. But uh, when, when you go to print, or pardon me, whenever you go to report anything out or whenever you go to uh, calculate anything, keep in mind that it works, that calculation and that report works on the entire selected set, not the filtered selected set. So keep that thought in mind when you do that. Okay, next thing I want to show you on filtering is I want to come back in here and I want to put my filter back in place so I can show you another option that you've got. And I'm going to just choose uh, two filters on here. And now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do a right click. And I can clear the filter. I can do a, a filter editor. So I'm going to click on my filter editor. And here is where you see the actual editor. The editor has a lot more power to it if you choose to uh, include it. And I'll, basically all you're doing is you're saying, I want to add, and I want to add a, let's say the drainage, eh, let's don't use drainage class. Let's say uh, component percentage RV, and you've got the ability to set the equals does not is greater than you've got quite a range here of information that you can choose from and so I want to say that um, I want to choose the component percentage that is greater than and I'm going to add a value and I'm going to say greater than 50 percent and I'm going to apply that and now I've included this into my filter that you see down here in the lower left hand corner so that is how you can come in here and you can add to and you can remove it. You can also come in here and say, you know, I don't care about Crete anymore. I want to see all how all my series stack up and give me all my series that are greater than 50%. Now I've modified my selected set, my filtered selected set, so that I can see uh, that particular qualification that I've added. So I hope that gives you a, a handle on how that filtering can be used to be another tool for analysis. I showed you grouping and I also showed you the uh, filtering. Uh, one last thing that I didn't show you, I'm going to go ahead and click OK out of here. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to close out all of my filtering. The other thing I didn't show you on group by that I should have is that you can also click and drag the group bys up into the group by uh, column once you've opened up this box when you open up that box you can then come in here and click and drag so I neglected to tell you that but uh, you can go through there and, and open that up I'm going to hide that box so that you no longer see it so some of the tools that we've given you to be able to do your analysis and use this analysis to be able to uh, keep you in NASIS instead of having to write reports and grab stuff and take it into Excel and Access I hope that helps you as usual. Just you know, feel free to uh, send me an IM or send me an email for any questions that you might have. So that ends Chapter 5, Table Layouts, and the way that we uh, use the table layout for analysis. Next, it will be Chapter 6.